Java, uh, uh, so basically, sorry, uh, special SQL. Uh, now we're into, uh, we looked also into Python, uh, we looked into, into JavaScript, uh, and now we are looking into Java, uh, which has been a key, uh, is one of the enterprise language, and is the uh, uh, language like most people fear. Uh, most is, um, so, um, the presenter today is uh, um, Brian Pondi. Uh, definitely, I'm uh, mostly into your IT stuff. Uh, and uh, this second presenter is a little bit sick. Uh, uh, once he has meal, he will, he, he will maybe will probably schedule a proper schedule for him to talk on Android and uh, and GS because we mostly as mostly done Android stuff. Uh, development and then definitely for the for the geo community. Um, and as usual, it's just uh, for today it will be toned down because definitely you can't cover so much in Java. It's just an overview maybe to see when you're exploring or when you ever get to a company that works in Java uh, works using Java, then you we won't be scared uh, of it or something. Um, so basically just introduction, general presentation, then if there's any discussions, and then any other business and, uh, and resources definitely. And, and so we are going to look into why Java. Um, uh, so uh, as a starting point, definitely um, major companies uh, use Java, whether, whether it's as a part of a component or as their main stack. And most of these things to interact with, right? Like uh, LinkedIn, Netflix, Google, uh, Amazon, Apple, uh, uh, Slack, Intel, NASA, uh, eBay, yeah, Spotify, and, and tens and tons and tons. Like, even if uh, Java is not uh, uh, the main language in most in, in a company, it will be probably be in a, some component of a project or a mini project. There is a high likelihood, yeah. But in any big companies like the top Fortune 500 or top 500 company, they usually have Java uh, components or programs written in Java in their tech stack. So this is a language one can never go wrong knowing if, uh, yeah, if, if it's a matter of, uh, of job security. Um, so actually, if you look into the main reasons Java has been strong um, for, for the past years, it has been mainly number two, but right now it's number three because Python overtook it this year. But it has been number one for quite, number two for quite some time, definitely number one being JavaScript is the language of the front-end development. And uh, yeah, number two has been mostly Java and then Python number three, but now Python is number two, Java number number three. But again, Java is still dominating in the in the enterprise uh, area. The, it has got large community. I, I believe Python has really grown because of its um, it's uh, it's easy to pick. Definitely, then the data science community has really grown, making it to be in demand and being number two among other factors. Like there are tons of data roles that are using it. Yes. Um, if if you look at uh, apart from large community and support for enterprise, uh, there is uh, the backward compatibility. Uh, this is something we can verify maybe from Python guys, because uh, at times in Java it's easy to shift from various versions. Uh, your your platform can be from Java eight to Java eleven, or you can go back or go past even Java seven without issues. But uh, I tend to feel maybe at, with Python and the, the Django and stuff, you usually tend to encounter some clash and errors. But but yeah, this is something that can be further discussed. If you if you love object-oriented programming, um, 
Java is known to that. It focuses on the four pillars uh, of, of object-oriented programming, um, the abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism, and which are here, this one I'm forgetting, but yeah, it's, it's basically object-oriented focused mainly. But since Java 8, there have been changes a little bit. They have started allowing capabilities for functional programming. So if someone would like to do functional programming, uh, from Java 8, um, there have been features have been improved uh, for functional programming. Platform independent, this was not in Java. This was actually the philosophy of Java that if you, you can build it on Windows or any other platform, and it will always run on any other platform. It can run on Linux and whichever other platforms for free, whichever type of computer without so much struggle. Uh, and and the another reason is static typing, which the, it involves uh, checking, right? Uh, like for example, uh, from Python 3.8, they introduced static uh, typing, right? But uh, initially it wasn't there, which is still optional actually in Python. Uh, but in Java, it's, it's like if you are putting an, an integer, you need to tell it an integer. If you are putting a, a double, you need to specify this is a double. So. So, which is really great, I think uh, uh, you really need to know what you are doing. Like, for example, you've seen some rocket launches uh, and their failures because of just using maybe a wrong data type, for example, and miscalculating the decimal numbers. Uh, like, when should you use a double versus when to use a float? So, so these are uh, so static typing is key depending on the sector or maybe like banking and this area that needs precision. To me, I find it's great, right? Then if you look into uh, open source libraries and frameworks, Java has been the language of the enterprise since the 90s. So many of companies adopted it, right? Well, when it was uh, built and uh, built up, so it has, it has really uh, mature libraries. Like you always get something, to, to, Java has something for you to, to, to use in whichever problem you have. In most cases, and and definitely performance. Uh, yeah, Java is, is performs fast. It depends on comparing it to what language and what resources you have. But yeah, it's definitely not faster than C plus plus. But yeah, if you compare it to maybe you benchmark it to maybe Python, then it depends. Yeah, it will be fast. But then it depends uh, in what angle you are looking at, what measurements you are you are putting into place. Uh, uh, another advantage of Java is even though it, it, uh, it's, it's, it has got its challenges like a steeper learning curve, it's easy to pick up other languages once you know Java because uh, Java really gives you a solid foundation for to, to transfer knowledge to other languages. So you tend to find other languages to be easier, uh, like Python will be a little bit easier for you, Kotlin, Scala. And these are several languages you can think of. Uh, it would be easy just to learn pretty fast. C sharp is pretty close to, to Java, so it would be kind of an easy pickup. Uh, garbage collection. This is this mostly matters to maybe the guys who develop in C plus plus. They will know what uh, about memory management and uh, and stuff. So this one I just leave it because yeah, it's only valuable to. People about C++ because I believe most languages now kind of do garbage collection in, in, in directly, but yeah, Java was a win to this compared to C++. Yeah, and definitely uh, uh, Java is also known for uh, beta concurrency. I think this was way before Golang. <laughs> Maybe Moha, you can you can talk about a bit about uh, concurrency versus parallelism here. Do you mean right now? Yes. Can we like do it later on? Okay, okay we can do it later on if, if that's fine. Okay. So yeah, as we said, uh, here's here's a here's an example, right? Uh, so now we are looking at the main disadvantages of Java. It's just like. Uh, the verboseness and the steep learning curve, which makes people fear it, and you can tell by the number of attendees, people tend to fear Java. <laughs> uh, so if if you look at, for example, uh, Python to print a lower is just so one line, right? 
In, in Java, it's uh, one, two, three, four, five, about five lines of the same simple process. Because, uh, uh, but then again, I usually tell people uh, when you look at Java, you should not look at it like uh, that. It was it was designed. It wasn't designed for for hello world kind of problems. It was designed <laughs> to 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 build a massive to solve massive problems. Okay. Uh, so yes, this is usually the case, but yeah, it was it was built to build uh, enterprise uh, the solutions, uh, and that's why this is usually the comparison. But yeah, it, it wasn't meant for this kind of stuff. Uh, like it has its own strong purpose. You just need to use the right tool uh, at the right time. So in the in the backend uh, frameworks, uh, Java Java still become friendlier on the backend. Um, uh, so the, the most popular framework right now in the industry is Spring Boot, uh, but then there are other minor ones like to it, like Micronut and Polka. Since most of you are familiar with Python, I can say like you can consider Spring Boot like uh, Django. Uh, Time to put it in that context, then maybe Micronut and Quakers are like Flask and maybe Fast API because they're also super fast. Yeah, so, so it's um, so it depends what you're building, but yeah, most industries use uh, most companies use Spring Boot, which to me, I found that once you know code Java to pick up Spring Boot is not a challenge because it, it's, it's mostly about understanding annotations and you just need to know. Uh, how the usual MVC framework, like in other programming languages, that this model view and controller, yeah, and it's 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 kind of pretty straightforward um, language with the tons of annotations to use, yeah, and, and 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 that's the main purpose. Right now, yeah, people still do some desktop programming, but very few. Right now, most companies are building web platforms, but if you are yeah, if you are going for the desktop solutions. Uh, I really don't I haven't looked much into it, but yeah, it's okay. So Android development is also pretty much great and interesting. Uh, this is a, uh, definitely you 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 can learn Java fast, but right now also Kotlin is coming in as a key as a key. Which is the de facto Google made it the de facto because uh, Java, Google, and Oracle were uh, having a lawsuit about using Java. On Android, there was, uh, there was certain issue with, with that. Yeah, but so for, for a long time, like most code builders in the in the companies we join, you tend to find them in Java, uh, unless the companies uh, started building new apps or different versions. Uh, then you might find they're using Kotlin, but still integrated with some Java. So Kotlin is just like an extension of Java. So to me, it's still great to learn Java. Then maybe you can check into pick up the Kotlin pretty fast and then just do Android development. Uh, depending on, on company, as I said, they are most are using the native, but as you know, so right now, the technology that changes, you can build uh, mobile apps with the, with, the, with the JavaScript framework. So like, for example, React Native, you can use it to build uh, both Android and iOS, and selling you from learning Java and also learning Swift or learning Kotlin and, and, and learning Swift at the same time. Yeah, but then it usually depends what your company does because if some companies just still prefer to stick to the native, so like learning Java, Kotlin, and just building with that compared to React Native. Um, uh, maybe if there's anybody who has tried to build on both platforms, can let me know. But yeah, like uh, the one you're seeing on the screenshot here uh, on the on the on the presentation is just a simple app that I built. So I was just doing my normal JS stuff, <laughs> and then my boss uh, at that time I was working at Seattle and approached me and said, "Hey Brian, we've got funding for for this stuff. Are you interested? It's a project uh, to build. You can build a, an app and stuff. Blah blah blah. Yeah." To help farmers, because you know farmers usually don't get information easily, and so it was to help them to get the market price, uh, farm management practices, weather information, and just the community to share resources. Uh, and so, if you see, in, so it's it's in Swahili, so I was targeting mainly Tanzanian farmers, and I just I was building. So my was uh, about uh, 
definitely a farm management practices of various crops, then have your hair, which also weather details, local weather details. Uh, they are so called the market price in that region. Then Ramania Jumia, this is just a community map visualization to show farmers. You know, at times farmers, maybe if there's one tractor, they can easily share or they can pull resources and share. So it was good for partnership. So it was just about entry, it's just simple app funded by the USAID. We didn't really finish the project because when Trump came in, he did cut the funding, so among other for many projects, including this one. Uh, so yeah, and that's when I left, but it was not properly unfinished, but we shifted to using the SSD, is it called the SSD platform? Because we put so many things on all due to budget cuts, but yeah, it's part of life. Yeah, so, and it was interesting. So here yeah, I really learned Java. I just learned Java like a month. The, the key foundations then, then dived into Android development and yeah, just using free resources. So it's a, it's a pretty thing someone can look into and maybe even build better stuff than this uh, for the community. Yes, so for, for GIS, there's um, uh, maybe three things many need to look into, I can say. Actually, it's just one, because the Java topology services, which has got like all the JS capabilities, and uh, GeoTools is also a library built on top of Java topology services. Hibernate is to communicate with the database, and it has got Hibernate special inbuilt now, which also borrows from just Java topology suits. So this is like, uh, if one knows Java, then you can look into this like, uh, on how if you're interested in building JS solutions with Java, for, for example. Uh, yeah, uh, and, that's, and that's pretty it for the Java. I didn't want to dive in the practical bit and, and whatnot, because to, to be honest, Java is, is, is huge. Uh, and if just someone is really interested in this and you just know the capabilities, it's better for you to really just create your time and go. Because this, what you do here, it's not about uh, it's not about teaching you hand by hand, but showing you what these things can do, where they're used, which companies, and, and what you can do, right? And if if there's any like let's join now, we we'll talk like. It was good to see NASA using Java and stuff. And, and and you can tell, like even from here, you can easily, once you learn Java, you can easily learn Scala. Um, why Scala? Because um, this depends on the, on the company. Because I've, I've seen I've seen John here. Is John, yeah, which has reminded me. Because uh, uh, John was getting a, a, an offer in, uh, John has gotten an offer in, in German Aerospace Agency. So I was just thinking about, uh, for example, Geotrellis is, uh, is uh, I believe it's Geotrellis. So it's, 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 it's uh, to process satellite images, it's, it's done with Scala, but definitely, yeah, uh, once you know Java, it's easy to learn Scala and it's easy to, to use the Scala knowledge in Geotrellis. Then you can use the Java knowledge on other big data processing tasks. Yeah, so Jotel is, uh, you see, it's, it's done in the Scala language. Uh, and it's, this will enable you to process tons and tons of, of satellite data at a super speed compared to, to doing it with Python. Um, so, so yeah, it really depends on the company that you work. The company will always, uh, will always determine the tool that you really want to use, uh, like, you, you'll be able to tell which tool will be more efficient. If, for example, if Python is efficient to you, yeah, then you don't need, because for example, even in Python for other some data analytics, there's GeoPySpark, right? And so it's not about just focusing on one language. Uh, so if if you find that GeoPySpark favors you compared to using Java stuff, is still possible? Yes, then stick to Python. It's, it's not that we're embedding you to do stuff uh, or to learn all the languages, but it's just to make people to be aware of the capabilities uh, that, that exist. Uh, yeah, oh, wow. you can, yeah, you can now explain the concurrency. <laughs> And parallelism, because Java was known to be great at concurrency. I think as a Golang person, we've used it uh, 
this is kind of before well um, you, you you'll forgive me a little because i did not have any presentation uh, prepared for this this was just like an impromptu request but i'll try to give it my yeah. best so um basically uh concurrency and parallelism these, these are just uh, terms that have been around for quite some time now uh, uh primarily for web developers or backend developers you always feel the need to process incoming requests which are usually more uh they usually get so many uh, requests so basically you want to process most of them or all of them uh, in one go or currently i'm using that word you know, but uh, at the end of the day you have a constrained amount of resources and you have so many clients out there who are sending requests to your a backend application or your server and you want to handle those within a short period of time so that's where the need for parallelism and concurrency came in so just just to make a distinction between the two concepts um, Concurrency is basically showing progress in two or more uh, uh, tasks. Let me just use the word tasks. So you have two or more tasks happening at the same time. They will be executing in overlapping time periods. They don't necessarily have to finish at the same time. So basically, these are two tasks that are happening at the same time. Let's say you, you kick off three tasks at the same time. Then one goes to 30%, another one goes to 40%, another one goes to 60%. Then you go back to the first one and uh, push it to 80%. You go to the second one, push it to 90%. Go to the third one, push it to 100%. So basically, these are tasks that will complete in overlapping times, but all the tasks are showing progress. That is what basically concurrency means. It is showing progress in two or more tasks. So when it's like you're ex executing all of them at the same time, but you don't have all of them running to completion in the same amount of time. So that is basically what we mean by concurrency. Parallelism, on the other hand, it's about doing two or more tasks at the same time. So basically, when you're doing something in parallel, if, if you have to push them from zero to 100, all, all of the tasks that you are performing in parallel will be running from zero to 100 at the same time. So that is, that is the core difference between the two, uh, the two concepts. Uh, concurrency is about showing progress in multiple tasks. Con uh, uh, parallelism is about doing those things simultaneously, executing those tasks simultaneously. So if, if, you, if you look at programming languages, I think there's there's uh, like a trend showing for as far as uh, uh, concurrency and parallelism are concerned, different uh, programming languages. For example, if you look at Python and JavaScript, these are interpreted languages. You, you don't compile the code into, into a binary or uh, a, 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 format or a format like that. So basically, uh, you'll see that uh, uh, Python and JavaScript, which are interpreted languages, they have the concept of worker processes. Uh, basically, worker processes are there to implement what we called uh, parallelism. Because at the, uh, two different worker processes, uh, let's say um, Python worker processes, can run at the same time and not, co not have any conflict between the two. If you look at compiled languages, something uh, Java and Golang, you will uh, realize that they don't have the concept of worker processes. Usually, you just run a single binary. You run this, the application as a single binary. But within that binary, you handle concurrency by using something uh, like threads. So if you look at uh, Java applications, if you are deploying a Java application, you will nine times out of 10, you will use uh, a multi-threaded um, uh, setup. You'll have that single binary spawning a lot of threads where you'll have, for example, each thread handling um, a request that comes in. So basically, Java is 
Java Java applications are primarily multi-threaded applications. Uh, in the case in the case of Golang, for example, Golang doesn't really leverage uh, operating system threads. What it does, it leverages smaller tasks called Go routines, uh, and they are famously lightweight. You can run a Go routine with uh, around kilobytes uh, of memory, and that is sufficient for you to run those Go routines. Uh, and that's why you'll find that Go applications have a very small uh, footprint when where, where uh, Java applications will have a slightly larger footprint because Go routines are lighter compared to operating system threads, which uh, Java usually leverages. I know I'm talking a lot of uh, jargon, Hava, but uh, to explain these concepts, we, we, we have to like mention a few of these a, a few of these concepts. So if, if you look at uh, a Python application or a JavaScript application, most of the time you'll see somebody running that kind of application in in, in cluster mode. So if you're running an application in cluster mode, basically you have the master process which is like a Python interpreter. Then you have the worker processes, which are like child processes that have been created by that master process. Then whenever requests come in, uh, the Python application will load balance those requests and push them to those worker processes. So basically, uh, in, in, in Python and JavaScript, you accomplish parallelism using uh, several worker processes. And then, if you want to do concurrency, then you can leverage uh, threads. Py Py Python can run threads. Uh, it can leverage operating system threads. Uh, JavaScript, on the other hand, is purely uh, single-threaded. And by JavaScript, I mean Node.js, which runs in the Chrome V8 runtime. It's, it's basically single threaded. You cannot run multiple threads. You will only run one single thread. And then the single thread runs an event loop. Now, for every request that comes in, uh, an event, uh, a task is created. That task handles that request. And when the request is completed, the task gets destroyed. And actually, the, the event based architecture of Node.js is, 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 very, is very efficient so efficient that uh, Python has borrowed some of those concepts and came up with a, a, a new standard called uh, ASCII, which basically uh, handles requests in an asynchronous manner. Uh, initially, Python was purely synchronous with blocking calls and it was characteristically slow. But since adopting uh, the asynchronous uh, event-based uh, mechanism from Node.js, Python has improved as far as speeds are concerned. If you look at a framework like uh, FastAPI, API, um, the benchmarks are close to what Node.js and Golang can give you. So it's it's basically a very a very good way of doing uh, concurrency. So for Java-based applications, you'll always be doing um, multiple threads. You'll be using a multi-threaded model to run your applications. Uh, I don't know if you can, if, if, if Java has an async, uh, async way of doing things. Uh, I'm not really into Java that much. So maybe Brian or any other Java expert can explain that if there's any way of doing asynchronous calls in Java. Uh, what, what I know so far is that you, you can do multiple threads with Java applications. Um, the good, the good thing with doing asynchronous calls in any in any implementation is that you can leverage what we call an event loop. The event loop is usually a very efficient task manager that can run thousands of tasks at one go. So basically, you 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 you, you get uh, you get so many requests being handled concurrently, and by so many, we are looking at thousands of requests, which is, at the end of the day, very, very efficient and is very scalable because it makes sure your operating system or uh, your, your, your CPU is always busy handling a certain request. If you're doing uh, threads, uh, multi-threading is usually controlled by the operating system, and people have uh, said 
that uh, the operating system is not very efficient. It's kind of slow when it comes to context switching. Uh, context switching is simply, uh, how can I explain this? Um, it's, it's when the CPU switches from thread to thread to make sure that all the threads are being ex executed concurrently. So basically, uh, the operating system is kind of slow, but there are implementations out there that are very fast. For example, uh, the, implement the implementation for Golang is, is very fast. The implementation for Node.js is very fast. Uh, the implementation for uh, the loop that uh, is, is primarily used in Python application is called Uvi loop. The Uvi loop is implemented in C++, which is very fast. <laughs> There's another one implemented in Python, but we all know Python is slow. Uh, so even for Python applications, the loop that they use is written in C to make it very fast. So in a nutshell, as far as um, concurrency and parallelism are concerned, um, interpreted languages will implement both concurrency and parallelism. Um, compiled languages, because they, uh, at the end of the day, you'll run a single binary, they usually leverage uh, operating system threads or inbuilt uh, routines such as Go routines to handle concurrency. I hope Sijapoteza mtu wapo, nimejaribu kukua like as, as, as simple as I can go. <laughs> so yeah, if, if anybody has any questions, please, um, Neza Nyulis. Okay, yeah, thanks uh, for trying to bring the message home. Yeah, definitely if someone has got an uh, issue, they can always search further and we can always, we can always Google and search further. So, uh, yeah, for, for resource, I don't know if there's anybody here who used Java and uh, drop it. If you have a reason, you can let us know. Or if there's someone considering it, you can let us know too. Yeah, but um, here are also the resources. Um, mostly this uh, in just the free resources. Amigos code is great. You, you also got a Discord. Discord is just like Slack if you have not used it, where a like, community share stuff. Um, or it's, it's just like a, a group where just people share resources. This Java Brains, this guy is super good. Uh, he's also super clear in explaining stuff. Uh, then there's the Disco Learning, uh, definitely frequent camp. We usually tend to have things like that cut across multiple programming languages. There's, they've also got great Java and Android uh, development stuff. Yeah, and uh, I think this is the resources. Uh, yeah, you can always find more because it is the there is uh, unlimited, but yeah. For example, if you just start with the first two, it would be okay. Like I think it's called as a beginner's guide for uh, two hours, beginner's guide on Java. If I just need to explore, you can check it out. And uh, on Discord, let me see if I can share the screen. So this is like the Discord is just a community. Uh, so I believe I'm in a big code, yeah. So they usually cover multiple programming languages. It is mostly focused on the Java, but yeah, there's Java, JavaScript, PHP, Slack, a community, and there's also a Facebook community on the same. Yeah, so that you, you can be with like-minded people, globalists. Right now, it's, people are usually willing to share knowledge, like what you are doing now. And, and, and it's, it's great because this enables um, people to really grow, right? It's, we're not in the 90s. And there's no need for holding information in, in, a, in a super limited field, right? Because you can imagine even with Java alone, you can decide to become a backend engineer, an Android developer, a data engineer. There is there's so many unlimited uh, opportunities with whichever programming language you choose and uh, yeah and there is demand in across all those fields so so that's that's the message just about sharing and people growing uh, 
Is there any person who's got any issue or any stuff to share or the experience with Java or if it was tough? Because mm -hmm. even right now, I'm, I'm trying to see that Java is becoming way friendlier because, uh, you know, Java is doing development. Initially, they were doing development after several years to release a new version, but now they're doing a release after every six months and it's, it's becoming way, way, way better, like super uh, writing less codes and stuff. Like that's the, the seems to be the focus now. And it's super interesting uh, where, where it's moving. Because uh, I don't know, I think I can show an example maybe using Java record. Let me see. I think it's, I think it has, has come out already. Uh, Oh, there's no proper. I wanted the uh, new features. I think, yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's just improvements on, on, on Java. Uh, I'm trying to find a better explanation, but yeah, since I can't get it, but yeah. Yeah. I should have searched this earlier to save our time, but yeah, you can look on to what record does, yeah. But, but record saves you from writing tons of code and stuff. Uh, yeah, like this record and you say person, a public record person, and then you, you put the attribute. It, it, it saves you from writing, because initially people used to write the methods and the whatnot and the getters and the setters. The record will do that for you, so it, it reduces the Python code to, to pretty much a short short lines of code, among other stuff. There's uh, Java's got a new switch statement. Uh, so it's it's improving. I can say uh, it's becoming better. Like when so many people are using the, when it should be like Java eight seventeen, I think probably early next year. It will be way better than 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 how people are used to it. Things are changing so fast. Uh, yeah, it has implemented functional way. Yeah, if you look at the new switch statement, I don't want to do because I really don't know if people have done Java. But yeah, the new the initial switch statement was like you say switch case blah blah, then you put return blah blah. But right now. Java is implemented, you just put the arrows and those arrows will return the value. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yes, initially this is how it was, case, blah, blah, then, then you do break. It was so complicated, but uh, from this, it, it, is tend, it is tending to be just a simple stuff, and you just use the arrows. Uh, yeah, it's becoming very simple as, as times goes by. I think it's becoming an interesting, simpler language too. It's, uh, I think it's about keeping up with the industry uh, or I'm just trying to, yeah, to, to catch up and become friendlier. So uh, yeah, that, that's it. Uh, I, I think most of you guys will usually be okay with Python, to be honest, I think, or <laughs> most of you will be okay with Python in most roles or task, but yeah, but if you are joining a company that deals with Java, don't get scared, just dive in and learn, and let it not scare you, yeah, especially if you're joining, for example, in Kenya, I can put in Safaricom, I think there are tons of Java there, uh, yeah, in Germany, it's, it's common, so many companies have Java, Java ecosystems, from Deutsche Telekom to, to whichever, like, uh, it's, it's like the key language here, uh, it depends in the US, definitely the top 500 companies have Java component. But, but Google is the same, like uh, Google, uh, the beauty of big companies, they, they have uh, like about 10 programming languages in various areas. So like you don't even need to, to worry, because if you find a team using Scala, a team using Java, a team using Python, a team using JavaScript and, and so forth. So yeah, the language should never really tie you down. It really depends on what you do and what your team does or what the company decided to focus on.
uh, and that's it because uh, once you decide to become an engineer you should never be scared of the tools but yeah you should be ready to embrace whichever whichever tool that will be not you know you should not be calling yourself just python developer or i'm just a java developer i'm just doing r or yeah you should be flexible because yeah unless you just want to stay in one company for life and not to grow I think that's it. Anybody has got a point to leave? We are finishing early, actually. It's been an hour. <laughs> uh, if there's no point, then yeah, uh, we can. Uh, uh, a quick one. Yeah. Quick one, Brian. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, like you said, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think people should be limiting themselves to like a particular technology. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, yeah. Uh, so primarily, I'm a, I'm a Python developer. Yes. But uh, at some point in time, if you come and encounter a project where you need to use something like GeoServer. Yes. Because GeoServer is one of the very awesome technologies as far as uh, the geo uh, the geospatial yes. domain is concerned. Yes. And basically, GeoServer, when you're doing it in development, uh, you'll probably install it on your machine. Um, uh, you'll probably install it on your machine using an executable. Yes. But in production, GeoServer will have to run as a Java web app. Yes. If, if you tell yourself that uh, I'll, I'll not learn Java because I'm primarily a, a Python developer, you, you'll, kind of, you'll, you'll come across a project where you have to use uh, GeoServer. Yeah. That means you know about how to deploy Java applications. Yeah. You need to know about... Um, uh, configuring something a, a, a Java application server, something like Apache Tomcat. Good, yeah. yeah, and deploying GeoServer in that environment. If, yeah. When it comes to deploying these things in a Docker environment, yeah. you need to know a few things about how to run Java in a virtualized, uh, in, in a Dockerized environment. Yeah. So it, it's, people should not really limit themselves to the programming languages, yeah. but they should uh, try and diversify or yeah. rather, try and see what kind of tools they use in their domain and try to be a little bit familiar with those. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you'll always encounter a tool that is outside your primary uh, knowledge base and you'll have to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the very important points that people need to understand. And even if somebody is afraid of Java, <laughs> like yeah. you say, yeah. but... Uh, they really need to know their way around it. They, you, you just need to know. Yeah. Uh, you travel to, to a new country. Yeah. that language there, but you should at yeah. least know how to say the hi. Basics. Hi. Yes. Hi. Exactly. So people should yeah. know how to say hi in Java. If yeah. you're in the geospatial domain, you really need to know how to say hi in Java. Because yeah. chances are you will encounter something written in Java and you'll have to use it. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, for me, I've used your servers uh, so much. I take it. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, the setup is just like setting up Java, raw Java stuff because it's, it's built on Java. So Apache Tomcat, and then setting that, accessing the data, manipulating those folders, and the examples, assigning rules, <laughs> or permissions. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Jose, does anyone work with the SQL specialist on Android? Uh, I don't know if there's anyone. I think the, the main Android guy is sick, sadly. Uh, when Swens is sick, he was supposed to give a bit of Android talk, uh, but he's not here. And for me, I haven't done SQL specialist on Android, so I can't really advise. Is there any other Android dev here? Uh, I guess not. Anybody was done under development? Uh, not really. So suddenly, uh, I said, uh, maybe you can reach out to Wens and confirm if he has done it, because yeah, he has, he has been doing Android for a long time now. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, if that's it, then yeah, we, we call it a day. Uh, any other discussion, we can usually discuss on the group, that's okay, just post but yeah that's it today we've been brief like an hour so which is really great i can say you guys have a wonderful weekend ladies and gentlemen have an awesome time
Thank you so much, Brian. You two have a great time and the rest of the team. Okay, great. Okay, great, everyone. Nice day. Okay, bye. 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 Thank you. Okay, bye, Bonaya. Thanks for the presentation. Okay, bye. Okay, I'm ending it now.